Howdy folks and welcome. I'm Tom Mills, the trail boss down at Rustler's Roost. Rustler's Roost is Enchilada's sister restaurant. Uh, I do uh, managing director down there and I also uh, run the spirits programs here at Enchilada's and Rustler's Roost. Uh, mi amigo here today with me is Lorenzo Lucas. Buenos dias. Lorenzo is the uh, key accounts manager for Arizona for Breakthrough Beverage and also a national ambassador for Ordura and Old Forester Bourbon, along with Jack Daniels. So we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about tequila today, how to make a fabulous margarita, and just some of the experiences that we've had down in Mexico. So uh, Lorenzo, if you wouldn't mind taking us through the flights of tequila, just kind of show us the different flights and um, how they're produced. Awesome. So the Herradura tequila is hand harvested in the fields. They own all of their own agave plants. Uh, the Jimadores are there from 5 in the morning to 11, 11 in the morning. And this tequila is all cooked in traditional clay ovens, steamed for 26 hours. They cool them down for 24 hours, hand stack, so very labor intensive, very traditional ways. There's other ways you can produce it. You can produce it in autoclaves. They don't do autoclaves at Herradura. So natural steam cooked agave produces this beautiful uh, nectar. Um, that is open tank fermentation. What does that mean? Fermentation is a process in which uh, yeast will go into the fermentation tanks and, and convert sugars to alcohol. All of the Herradura tequila is naturally fermented. 300 different varieties of yeast uh, due in part to all the uh, citrus trees that are located on the hacienda, which by the way is over 400 year old hacienda. So what you get is you get a very clean complete fermentation uh, from fermentation that goes to the distillation, distilled twice by Mexican law. Um, they cut heads and tails, so they cut out the bad alcohol, they cut out, uh, they keep the heart, the good alcohol. And um, one interesting thing about Herradura that's important to pro uh, point out is that they are sustainable. It's less than 1% of everything that they produce goes to landfill. So we get this beautiful tequila, directo de la Mabiga. This is how it all starts out double distilled, beautiful. 110 proof, right? 110 right, off, proof. right off the still. Yeah, right off the still. Um, the next one that is that they, uh, this is their silver. Their silver is actually rested for uh, uh, 45 40, days. 45 days. Yeah. A lot of people don't do that. Why do they do that? Because they can. They're big, they can do things. That's the way the distiller wanted to do it. It gives you a very nice mouthfeel, a very smooth finish, beautiful aroma. Um, this next one here, this is also silver, but this is kind of a little bit deceiving, right, Tom? This is Absolutely. silver, but this Our is actually favorite. an añejo. Yeah, it's delicious. So most añejos look like this. They're dark in color. However, you pass them through an activated charcoal filter process, uh, filtration system process, and it takes out the color. But the añejo is all there. Uh, Herradura has always been very innovative. In 1970, they introduced the first reposado. To, to, to the tequila market, 1974. In the United States. And the U.S., yeah. yeah. The Añejo, minimum uh, age or maximum, maximum age requirement for an Añejo is uh, two years. Minimum is 12 months. They go 25 months. They go 25 months on their Añejo. Why? Because they have the time and the ability to be able to do that. So you get a beautiful aged Añejo tequila. And uh, this here is a very special one. So myself, Tom, Tiffany, uh, we've been down to Herradura. We've picked their barrels of tequila, uh, selected for, by enchiladas. And uh, this is a double barrel reposado. So aged 11 months, aged an additional month in a brand new tequila barrel. And we tasted some barrels down there. Uh, we tasted uh, 18 once. We, we certainly have. The last time we went down, this is the barrel head that we had. And so we wanted to, we've blown through so many barrels so quickly. When we started this program in 2015, we had no idea the popularity. Between both restaurants, we're selling about 20,000 margaritas a year uh, of the double barrel reposado. So when we went down last time, uh, when we had the opportunity to go down, uh, we selected three barrels per restaurant. So what we did was, it got a little confusing. <laughs> so Ruben, who is the global brand ambassador for Herradura and is the utmost authority, in my opinion, on tequila, uh, said this is getting a little crazy. So we came up with this barrel head and we started, Ruben started marking on the back whose everyone's selection was. And we finally got to a point where we could select the barrels that we needed. Uh, it was a long day, but it was a most wonderful day. 
So um, the one thing I forgot to point out is both Lorenzo and I are T-Class certified from the Council of Regulatory Tequila. Um, and what does that mean? That means that we've drank a lot of tequila <laughs> and we've given up our liver in pursuit of uh, the, for the restaurant. Well, it's a little more detail than that. <laughs> yes, we, we were actually um, were certified in Mexico. There's certification classes that happen around the U.S. We had the pleasure of being in Mexico at the CRT building. And CR, it, tequila is an appellation of origin. It's protected just the same way as champagne is protected. You can't call it champagne if it doesn't come from Champagne, France cannot be tequila unless it comes from one of five states, Jalisco being the state that produces about 95% of the tequila. So we were down there, we've seen the strict regulation that there is for tequila production, the strict regulation there is for exporting. Uh, literally, I mean, we were like in a DNA lab. They wanna make sure that what people are submitting and they're saying is 100% glue agave tequila is exactly that. So that's very special because there's not a lot of people to get to be certified. Uh, tequila experts uh, down in Mexico so yeah it's a labor of love that's right <laughs> so I think we forgot Lorenzo the, the, the godfather of all uh, the Selección Suprema yeah Selección Suprema so this is considered an extra añejo so back in the mid 90s there was a tequila uh, shortage and for añejo tequilas well Herradura said what better time than to start an extra Asian añejo so they actually introduced this to the world in the mid 90s 95 96 um, this tequila is aged for 49 months. Think about that. They don't harvest their agave plants until they're at seven years of age. And then they decide they want to age this one for another 49 months. So when I drink tequila, and we've taught Tom and the girls how to do, do this as well, it's not about slamming or shooting. Well, maybe it, depending on the occasion, right? Birthday shot. We want to sip tequila. We want to sip tequila and we want to think about what went on the last 12 years of our lives? Think about that. Think about the guy that's harvesting in the field. Think about the years that it took that agave plant to grow. Think about the time it spent in the barrel. What was going on in the world? God, next year's barrels are going to be interesting to think about what happened mm -hmm. <laughs> in 2020 and in the years prior. So that's the beautiful thing about tequila. It's uh, Appalachian of origin protected, very strict production. We can't just start an agave field here and call it tequila. It has to be from Mexico. So that, that, is, uh, that is absolutely important, absolutely key. And they have also done some experimental barrel finishes. This tequila here is a Reposado tequila, 11 months, longer than anybody else in Mexico. 11 months, it starts out like this. And the master distiller decided, let's do something different. Let's finish it in a different barrel, and get some different perspectives. So this is actually um, aged for an additional two months in a vintage port cask uh, from the Douro Valley of Portugal. Um, very nice. Then, 100% tequila with just a little subtle finish of European greatness. So one of the beautiful things that Lorenzo touched on is special occasions, uh, how to use tequila, how to drink tequila. Very similar to wines, you've got your Chardonnay and then you've got, you can move into a red or you can move up to different uh, varietals of, of, of wines. So with the different categories of tequila, you've got zero to two months is going to be your silver. Two months to a year is going to be your Reposado, which is we're going to Take this double barrel Reposado, and the day that we taste it is the last day of the year. And then once we taste it, make our selection, they move it into a stainless steel barrel. So it retards the aging process, and it still is a Reposado. If they waited one more day, it would move it into an Añejo category. So Añejo is going to be a year to three years. And then as Lorenzo talked about the extra Añejo or Maduro, uh, that's going to be three years plus. Uh, and then uh, also one of my favorite new categories is as we talked about the ultra, which is what they call a Cristalino. Uh, yep. There's a lot of expressions coming out with the different uh, tequila brands. Uh, and then also I did want to mention the one thing you mentioned about is Aradura. And, and Lorenzo is very good at rolling his R's. I'm not so much. <laughs> So if you are like me, just take the H off of Aradura and just say Aradura. Aradura. Okay, Aradura. So, uh, but one of the beautiful things uh, that I love about Aradura, when you go down to the Hacienda, it's 256 acres, uh, that it is the only working Hacienda in Mexico. That's correct. And there's five things to make it a working Hacienda. Would you like to run, run us through yeah, this? Yeah, so it has to be closed by four walls, um, which Herradura is over 400 year old. The uh, employees need to live there. Not naturally, not every employee is going to live there now. However, there is a sixth generation of Himadores that still live on the site. 
So you have to have housing there. You have to have your own food source and water source. They have their own food source, they have their own cattle, they have their own water source, which is key in making good tequila as well. And they got citrus, so they have the means to feed their employees. The other thing is this, is you have to have a Catholic church on the site, and they actually have a Catholic chapel. Built, was, built right into the main residence. Yeah. So yeah. the families lived there ever since 1870. Yeah, and we've been able to be in that main residence. Not everybody gets to do that. That was pretty special. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah. So, so blessed by the Pope, um, and uh, so it meets the criteria. There's other tequila companies that have built haciendas on their property. You know, they're maybe 30 years old, but they're not 400 years old. So this is a true working, authentic, uh, last true operating hacienda producing tequila in Mexico. So we're going to move on to this segment that we're going to show you how to make a great margarita at home. And uh, we wanted to talk about that for this segment. I've got a little bit of color, the spirit of Mexico with me here. here we uh, so we're going to talk All about right. it. So one of the things is, is when you're making a great margarita, so you're going to obviously use a fine tequila. Uh, Verdura is obviously one of our favorites. Uh, you're going to actually use a fine mix too. This is a fresh lemon lime mix, a little bit of sugar, acidic acid, and filtered water. Um, the key with making any type of uh, great cocktail is the mix. The mix is so important because it's 80 to 90% of the drink. Obviously you want a fine spirit, but if you don't have a great mix to go along with it, you're really gonna have an issue with the quality of the, of the final, final drink. And then we're gonna use a mid to high level orange liqueur. So then when we make that drink, and one of the things at home when you're doing this is, you know, you're having a cocktail party, you're having some friends over. Do they want salt? Do they not want salt? So one of the things you can do is you just want to salt half the rim of the glass. All right, so then you've got half the rim of the glass salted. Now we're going to use, we're going to fill the glass with ice, very important, so that you don't water down the drink. We're going to use a two, to three ounce pour of tequila. A little bit of our fine mix. And you're looking at this glass and you're thinking, wow, this is like a 16 ounce glass. But in, in theory, you've got two to three ounces of tequila. Once you put all that ice in there, you're only looking at a five, five to six ounce pour of yeah. mix. Uh, and then we're gonna float it off with a fine orange liqueur. So this makes a phenomenal margarita. Uh, you'll be the hit of the party, and uh, we'd like to thank you for spending some time with us. We hope that uh, it was informative, it was enjoyable, and I know that uh, the spirit of tequila lives in all of us. Absolutely.